Oke, okay, baik. Selamat pagi semua. Uh, salam sejahtera. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat datang untuk kita semua di dalam uh, kuliah umum pada pagi hari ini yang diselenggarakan oleh Fakultas Ilmu Budaya uh, Universitas Samratulangi. Adapun beberapa acara yang kita akan uh, lakukan pada pagi hari ini adalah uh, uh, kuliah umum. Tapi sebelumnya akan didahului dengan beberapa kegiatan, dengan doa, kemudian ada sambutan, dan kemudian langsung kepada kegiatan inti kita pada pagi ini, yaitu kuliah umum, dan pada bagian akhir akan ada sesi tanya-jawab. Nah, sebelum kita memulaikan kegiatan kita pada pagi hari ini, saya meminta Bapak Maxi Koyong, M. Home, untuk memimpin kita di dalam doa. Dipersilakan. Ya. Oke, okay. uh, terima kasih atas kesempatan. Sebelum kita memulaikan acara uh, kuliah umum hari ini, mari kita memohon tuntutan, tuntunan roh kudus dan izinkan saya untuk berdoa menurut agama dan kepercayaan saya, Kristen Protesta. Mari kita berdoa. Kami sungguh bersyukur kepada ya Tuhan, pencipta semesta alam. Oleh karena cinta dan kemurahan Tuhanlah, sehingga sampai pada saat ini kami boleh berada sebagaimana kami ada sekarang. Saat ini ya Tuhan, kami akan mengadakan kuliah umum. Untuk itu ya Tuhan, sebelum kami memulaikannya, kami mem datang kepadamu, memohon tuntunan roh kudus menyertai atas kami semua, sehingga acara ini boleh berjalan dengan baik. Engkau memberkati Ibu Rimajon Sotlikova Pizzi, yang menjadi pembicara tunggal pada hari ini. Engkau memberkati juga Bapak Dekan, Fakultas Ilmu Budaya, Dr. Anus Ferry Raymond Malgere, Enhub Nembar, Kemudian Ibu Meili Neman, MPD, yang menjadi moderator kita pada sepanjang kegiatan ini. Bahkan seluruh sivitas Akademi Fakultas Ilmu Budaya Unsrat dan seluruh peserta. Tuhan memberkati kami semua sehingga apa yang kami dengar, terutama dari pembicara kami, itu menjadi berkat untuk kelanjutan pekerjaan kami demi kemajuan Fakultas Ilmu Budaya Teristimewa Unsrat umumnya. Tuhan Allah memberkati jaringan internet yang akan kami gunakan sehingga kegiatan seminar ini boleh berjalan dengan baik. Inilah ya Tuhan yang menjadi doa serta mohonan kami. Dalam nama Tuhan kita, Yesus Kristus, Juru Selamat, Kas Jiwa kami, serta berkenan kiranya Engkau mengampuni akan segala dosa dan segala pelanggaran kami. Dalam nama Tuhan Yesus, Amin. Baik, terima kasih untuk Maxi. Ya. Uh... Saat ini saya akan sebagai panitia tentu saya akan menyampaikan beberapa hal bahwa kuliah ini nanti akan di, uh, dilakukan dengan uh, dua bahasa ya bilingual sehingga uh, akan mempermudah mungkin kita uh, apa untuk men menyimak dan kemudian mendengarkan dan kemudian uh, mendapatkan uh, keuntungan dan kemudian uh, apa namanya materi yang akan diberikan nanti. Baik, sebagai Ketua Panitia, perkenankan saya untuk memberikan laporan kegiatan pada hari ini. Saya akan memberikan dalam bahasa Inggris. Ya. Oke, okay. good morning everyone. Thank you so much for joining our public lecture this morning. Especially to our distinguished speaker, Terima John Sotlik of PhD from the National University of Uzbekistan. My name is Roger Kembuan as the chair of committee. 
I would like to present the report of today's program. Uh, first of all, uh, we're more than uh, 300 uh, registered participants. And now in this meeting, there are um, 230, yeah? Uh, hopefully the other can soon join us so they can also listen and get the point of this today's public lecture. In this opportunity, I would like to welcome our Dean of Faculty of Humanities, Universitas Samratulangi, Dr. Anders Perry Raymond Mawikere Emum MH, for attending our public lecture this morning. I would like to thank our Vice Deans of Student Affair, or uh, in Bahasa, we call it WD3, yeah? Dr. Randa Dona Ratitimbulang Emhum, for assigning me to arrange this program, since this program is under her supervision. Hopefully, this program will bring so many benefits for us, especially for the student. And now, I would like to invite our Dean of Faculty of Humanity, uh, Dr. Andres Ferry Raymond Mawikere Mhum MA, to give some remarks and to open this program officially. Thank you. Yeah. Langsung kang Raja. Ya, Ya. Oke, good morning everybody. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished speaker Rima. Rima Yon Satlikova. It's the the charming lecture lecturer from National University of Uzbekistan. Good morning, Mr. Perry. <laughs> Uzbekistan is one of the nice country in East Europa, I think. Yeah. Uh, at this precious moment, let us uh, first express our gratitude to the merciful God who has granted us with blessing and grace that we could gather here today to attend the public lecture. I'm also again and again would like to express my appreciation to our honorary speaker, Rimayon Satlikova PhD, for being here virtually with us and giving valuable material for university students, for all of us. I believe that these interesting issues, the topic, how do language and culture influence each other, would give inside the audience. All of us, because learning a language is not only about learning such as grammar or pronunciation. But more than that, we need to know the culture, those who we are using that language. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Faculty of Humanity UNSRAT, I'd like also to express my grateful to the committee. My appreciation also goes to Meili Nailman together <laughs> with her husband, Roger Kemwan, who has made this program possible. And finally, I wish the participants a productive discussion throughout the topic. And stay comfortable at home. Thank you. Thank you, Dekan. Oke, okay, uh, sekarang kita akan uh, langsung saja untuk uh, menuju acara kita ya yang yang utama yaitu uh, kuliah umum yang akan diberikan oleh Rima John Sotli ke PhD. Yang akan nanti akan dimoderatori oleh Ibu Meili Neman, MPT, ya. uh, waktu dan tempat tanpa mengurangi uh, 
berbahasa-bahasa lagi saya berikan kesempatan kepada Bu Meili untuk memandu kegiatan kita pada pagi hari ini. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone. How are you this morning? I hope you are in the, you are all in a good condition. And my name is Meili Neman. I am your moderator today. Thank you, uh, Bapak Dekan FIB, Dr. Andes Ferry Raymond Mawikir MA, for a warm welcome. Um, and also, uh, I would like to introduce our guest lecturer today, yeah? um, Rima Jun Sotlikova, PhD. Beliau adalah teman saya dulu waktu ambil S2 di UNY. And so happy that today we can be reunited again, yeah? <clears throat> okay. Um, Rima is currently working as a full-time lecturer in National University of Uzbekistan and also as a part-time lecturer in the, in the Uzbek State World Languages University. Rima was graduated as Bachelor of English Philology from the Uzbek State World Languages University and that in 2012, he took her Master in Education major in Applied Linguistics and continue her doctoral degree in English language education in uh, 2014. And both from Unifer Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta, the place where I and Rima first met and became a good friend until now. Okay, um, our distinguished speaker, our guest lecturer today, uh, she has published uh, several scientific articles. You can find it in internet, yeah? Some of them are about teachers' perception on using communicative language teaching in the English class. And the other one is about ESP learning materials development model for ICT student published in Scopus Index, International Journal of Science and Technology. Um, this is very, very, very interesting, yeah, about her language skills. <clears throat> Prima masters four languages, yeah, four languages. Uh, Uzbek language, Russian language, English, and Indonesian language. And I think a little bit Japanese, yeah, Rima? <laughs> because, uh, yeah. yeah, we were staying in Jogja and we learned about the Japanese language too. Rima has received many certificates and awards that I think I don't have enough time to read one by one, yeah, since there are so many. And talking about culture and language, Rima has so many experiences, especially when she was an international student. She was, I, I know that she was actively participating in several events like workshops, seminars, and festivals related to culture and language. It can be seen by her certificate and award list, yeah? Well, I think that's all for her CV, still so many, but we don't have enough time. And before we start to our, um, lecture today i would like to remind everyone ya yeah, semua yang memiliki pertanyaan sebentar um, nanti setelah ini in the end of the meeting we will have a question and answer session dan jika bapak ibu semua memiliki pertanyaan silahkan di uh, di uh, type di chat box ya yeah. kita saya akan bacakan atau juga siapa yang ingin um, bertanya secara langsung akan dipersilahkan oke okay? so without further ado I'd like to invite Rima Jones of Ligova PhD to start the lecture. Rima, the time is yours. Okay. Thank you very much, Meili. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, Mr. Ferry and uh, Mr. Alan and other lecturers and also students. I'm uh, really happy to see all of you here because I've been for many years in Indonesia and I really miss Indonesia and I, I miss my Indonesian friends. And this is a good opportunity, as Meili said, that we have we met each other through this conference and I'm really happy about it. And I'm also happy that uh, I see here uh, lots of participants in our conference and it makes me to feel confident and uh, to feel like they are really interested in languages and cultures. Um, so <clears throat> uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to present a topic and it's about culture and language and how do culture and language uh, influence each other. Let me share the screen just a minute. Is it visible? Yes. All right. 
Okay. Uh, today we are going to talk about how do language and culture influence each other. And I'm going to share my own experience and also share my friend's experience while we are in a, uh, while we are in foreign countries. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I want to ask, what is language? And can we make it, please, uh, in interactive way? Like, I'm going to ask your ideas and we can explore our ideas and share our experience. Then we will give uh, another description or maybe we can find the same description, description for language uh, learning together. So share your ideas, please, uh, and description about language in chat box. Can you please? What is language? And then Miss Meili can help me to elaborate the ideas from the students by reading maybe their <laughs> ideas about the language. Okay, there are several students, there are several participants are typing here. Language is a sign. Language is the tool of communication. Language is a way of information. Language is tools. Yeah. Language is the way we communicate with each other. Yeah, I think, yeah. That's enough, yeah. yeah that's All enough. right, yes, you have lots of ideas and I'm really happy that you are participating active in this conference. And um, we already have the same definition uh, as you said about the language, uh, that, that language is a tool. Uh, and first of all, I want to uh, present that we are going to define the terms about language and culture and then the relationship between language and culture and how language shapes the way people think and the influence of language and culture. And we have here the description for language. As you said, language is a tool for communication and it's a medium to transfer ideas and thoughts and system of human communication either spoken or written consisting the uh, consisting of the used um, structured conventional way used words in structured and conventional way and then uh, here you can see uh, image uh, it's about uh, lang language is about to pass the knowledge from generation to generation and language is first developed in humans about 100,000 years ago so before we talk about language we should know a little bit about the history of the language and it's really interesting but we are not talking a lot about the history and we move on and here you can see a statement by Edward Safir in 1921. He said that language is a purely human and non-instinctive method of communicating ideas, emotions, and desires by means of produced symbols. And symbols can be by speech, writing, or even sign languages. And as <clears throat> it's all about the gestures and then the accents and tone of voice. And uh, another question is, what do you think? Is language a genetic gift? So do we acquire and do we produce the language uh, learning by our uh, learning it by our ancestors or parents? So uh, if our parents speak in uh, appropriate language, then does it mean that we are going we are also going to communicate in that language in our parents language is language a genetic gift what do you think can you please type in a chat so we can explore our ideas is language a genetic gift what do you think All right, someone raised hand. Miss Mele, you mute your voice. Okay, it's yes. Matthew, if I'm not mistaken. Matthew, 
the one who raised hand, maybe do you want to say something or do you want to answer or give some opinion about this? Is language a genetic gift? Yes, no? you're welcome to explore your ideas and it's, it will be really interesting for us too. Is language a genetic gift? And do you have any ideas in the chat? In the chat, someone, Ellen Liggy, she said that language is more, a language is not a genetic gift. It is a social gift. Okay, yes, that is the correct answer. Usually, yeah. uh, I don't like to say that your your answer is correct or your answer is wrong. We are just uh, developing and exploring our ideas, but uh, she, she gave us really correct answer. And this is it. So, uh, <clears throat> genetic gift uh, means uh, getting something or uh, getting some physical appearance or personality or characteristic from our parents. So that will be genetic. So here you can see the picture of a boy and the height uh, of this boy is same like his mother and his eyes are same like father and ears too and the hair is uh, from her from his uh, mother so that means it's genetic but not language here you can see the statement by frank smith language is not a genetic gift it's a social gift learning a new language is becoming a member of the club the community of speakers of that language and here an example that a German child born in China, for example, it doesn't mean that German child uh, starts speaking in Chinese language because of the soci society. Uh, it doesn't mean that German child starts speaking in German language, but in Chinese language uh, because of the effect uh, from the society and the people uh, around her and uh, communication with her friends so that means uh, her german child uh, her her parents are german but uh, he, mm, he she she will not start speaking in german language because of her friends she starts in chinese language and the same example here uzbek boy born in indonesia and he's my son he was born in indonesia while i was doing my phd program so uh, but his parents are uzbek but uh, he started uh, communicating first of all in indonesian language and then in english while we were living in indonesia uh, and uh, so it doesn't mean that his parents are Uzbek and uh, he starts speaking in Uzbek language, no. So because of the society and the communication around him, he started to communicate in Indonesian and also in English. And uh, when we were back to Uzbekistan last year, he had really a challenge uh, about the languages uh, because uh, we we went and I want to ask if it's uh, clear and understandable for uh, all our participants or should I use in Indonesian language too? Miss Meli, what do you think? Okay, maybe um, you can do it bilingual 7030 or it's up to you. But I think it's it's clear. How about the others? Apakah bisa seperti ini atau terlalu cepat? Mungkin silakan kalau ada partisipan yang ingin memberikan saran kepada pembicara. Okay, I think everyone is okay with this. Okay, so thank you very much. So uh, when we were back to Uzbekistan with my son last year, then uh, he really had problem. He really had challenge of lang about the language because uh, he used to uh, speak in Indonesian and English. And then whenever we went to the market, then uh, for example, let's say he wants to buy milk and then he says it in, in Indonesian first. So he says, saya uh, mau beli uh, susu. Boleh beli susu, mama? Something like that. And then everybody's surprised what language he's talking, what language he's speaking in. And then uh, he, he also surprised, and he was also surprised and he was in a shock uh, actually. And he thought that he's doing something wrong. 
And then he started to say it in English. He said, uh, I want to buy milk. Mommy, can we, uh, can we buy milk, please? And then everybody came to us and started asking because in my country, our uh, daily language is Uzbek and Russian. And we also study English as a foreign language. And everybody came to us and uh, were asking that how he acquired uh, the language in his early age. And uh, is it, it's very good that he's talking in English, something like that. And then he started uh, to be confused. He thought that he, uh, whenever he's speaking, he's doing something wrong. And uh, the challenge started here. And he stopped talking in both languages, in Indonesian and in English, whenever we go, we, we went out. But uh, at home, he continued to speak in Uzbek and Russian language with us, uh, Russian and uh, English languages with us, but uh, there was some problem with Uzbek and Russian because we were we lived uh, with my son for about three years, uh, four years in Indonesia. So that was a problem to use Uzbek and Russian in my country for him. And then I decided to give uh, to put him in Russian class in Russian class club uh, in learning languages center. And he started to learn Russian language and he was so excited. Why? Because of uh, the people and friends around him. Whenever he, uh, uh, whenever he uh, expressed his ideas in Russian language, then everybody understood, uh, understood him and everybody uh, gave him reply, answer. So then he told me that, mommy, I'm going to use Russian language only, not English, not Indonesian. And I asked why? Yeah, because whenever I use in English or Indonesian outside, uh, then everybody's surprised and they make me shocked. And uh, now uh, he, in daily life, he started to use Russian language because it's very comfortable for him. So that's why what I call language challenge, uh, because uh, because of the society, because of the people around us, uh, it made him a challenge. And uh, the place he born, uh, as we know, language and culture related each other. And uh, he was born in Indonesia. And uh, as we know, in Indonesia, you have, uh, you have uh, two seasons, hot weather and rainy season and he was born in November and at that time it was uh, super hot and uh, but in Uzbekistan in November the weather the weather is really cold and we have four seasons and November is uh, the end of autumn and beginning of winter. What I want to say here is um, whenever uh, we talk about his birthday party, then I say, yes, it's coming soon because you were born in cold weather and the cold weather already started here and your birthday is coming. But at that time, my mommy corre corrects me. He says that, no, he was born in super hot weather because he was born in, in, in Indonesia, not in Uzbekistan. But in Uzbekistan, uh, we uh, explain children uh, when their birthday party, about their birthday party, if they are born in summer, we call it hot weather and in winter, cold weather. So we say that you were born in cold weather, but actually my son was born in super hot weather, not in cold weather. And it's the, the, that's the difference between the countries and the, uh culture and also uh language challenge and this is how it looks our russian alphabet here so i first of all i thought that it will be challenging and it will be difficult for my son to acquire the language uh jadi saya uh, pertama kali berpikir bahwa uh, itu akan jadi challenge uh, untuk uh, anak saya karena uh, alfabetnya beda hmm, dan uh, tapi karena anak kecil uh, bisa belajar cepat jadi uh, itu tidak uh, membuat dia kesulitan karena dia sudah mulai uh, 
belajar um, bahasa uh, Rusia dan dia sudah mulai uh, bisa komunikasi dengan teman-teman di Uzbekistan. Jadi uh, at that time he was happy that he could acquire the language. Even the alphabet is different with the English alphabet and then even the language itself is different with uh, Indonesian language, but he was really happy to acquire the Russian language because of communication with his fr friends. And <clears throat> Uh, as we know, language is all about phonology, how sounds are used in speech, syntax, the word of the, uh, the, the order of the words and semantics, the meaning of each individual word. But we are not talking about the grammar today. Uh, we, are, we are talking about the language and culture. And um, I want to say that uh, before the grammar, uh, okay, uh, I want to say that uh, language is all about phonology, syntax, and semantics, but it's also uh, uh, how to teach the culture through the language. So we should include in our teaching uh, the culture too. And uh, language is about identifying your identity too. So what are the identities? Uh, they are family, religion, community, nationality and culture. So we uh, express uh, about all these identities through the language. So language is important in our life and uh, we teach culture too through the language. And I want to ask what is important when you learn a foreign language? What do you think, what is important? Can you please explore your ideas in chat? So when you start learning the language, what is important or uh, how to start learning a foreign language? Okay, bagi partisipan yang ingin memberikan jawabannya, silakan. Apa yang penting ketika kita belajar bahasa asing? Oke, okay, grammar. Ini ada yang jawab grammar. Um, we can learn their culture too. From Amelia, Juni, Vicky. Pronunciation, vocabulary. Any other? Okay, okay I think that. All right. Yes. Thank you for being active. I really like uh, when we have interaction dur during our presentation. So all are important and you are really close to it. And the most important thing is vocabulary. So before the grammar, we start learning learning the, the words and the vocabulary when we start uh, to learn a foreign language. Uh, because it, it's based on my uh, own experience because uh, when I went to Indonesia, then uh, I, I thought that I never can communicate in uh indonesian language but uh, indonesian language uh, was easy about the uh, construction and the structure of grammar so i acquired the language very easily maybe in two months i started to communicate in indonesian language and here you can see the statement by david wilkins that uh while without grammar little can be conveyed without vocabulary nothing can be conveyed jadi kalau uh, tidak pakai grammar uh, ketika kami uh, komunikasi uh, itu uh, tidak akan membuat uh, kesuli, uh, sulitnya besar tapi kalau kami tidak tahu uh, tidak tahu kata-kata di bahasa itu itu akan membuat kesulitan uh, jadi pertama kali ketika saya di Indonesia uh, saya tidak belajar uh, bahasanya Uh, mulai dari grammar. Da jadi saya belajar itu uh, dari kata-kata. Uh, jadi saya uh, belajar banyak kata dan saya belum tahu bagaimana uh, membuat uh, membuat kalimat. Tapi saya tahu kata-katanya. Jadi saya pakai kata itu saya uh, ex express my ideas whenever I need. Just uh, this is the example. Uh, jadi saya pertama kali ketika di Indonesia saya belajar 
bahwa bread is uh, roti. Jadi saya uh, ke ke rumah makan dan saya uh, minta roti. Uh, tapi mereka kasih untuk saya roti manis. Tapi di kalau di negara saya kami setiap hari uh, makan roti dan uh, teman saya uh, Meli sudah tahu tentang itu. Jadi uh, whatever we eat we eat with bread. But in Indonesia whatever you eat you eat with rice. Jadi kalau di Indonesia uh, orang-orang makan nasi putih uh, setiap hari, jadi kalau tidak makan nasi, tidak kenyang. Kalau di Uzbek, kalau tidak makan roti, tidak kenyang. Tapi rotinya itu, uh, waktu itu saya uh, minta roti di rumah makan, tapi mereka kasih uh, roti manis. Uh, jadi saya uh, berpikir, oh saya harus uh, belajar uh, apa itu uh, bread, uh, plain, plain bread. And um, and then uh, they uh, next day I ask uh, uh, from that cafe that uh, can you please uh, can I have please uh, can I have please roti tawar. Jadi mereka kasih untuk saya roti tawar. Jadi saya saya itu uh, berkata uh, hanya the, uh, hanya katanya saja. Tidak membuat itu uh, grammar structured or something like that. I just said the word. Can I can uh, I just said the word roti tawar. Jadi mereka kasih untuk saya roti tawarnya. Uh, jadi vocabulary is very important when we start learning languages, not the grammar, but grammar next step. Jadi uh, ini ya roti tawarnya, tapi uh, ketika kami uh, dengan teman-teman uh, di universitas, uh, dengan grup uh, ke Bali, uh, mereka tanya uh, apakah ada yang uh, tidak makan daging atau apa. Uh, tapi kami makan dagingnya juga dan ada macam-macam uh, makanannya di Uzbek, tapi semuanya dengan roti. Tapi waktu itu saya bilang bahwa saya tidak makan nasi putih, tapi makan roti tawar. Jadi ketika kami ke Bali, mereka itu kasih uh, roti tawar terus untuk saya dan tidak ada makanan. <laughs> dan ini waktu itu uh, lucu sekali, saya bilang, di mana makanan saya? Dan mereka bilang, oh kami uh, 31 di sini, tapi kami pesan 30 saja karena kamu bilang kamu makan roti. Jadi waktu itu saya lapar juga, tapi ya tidak apa-apa setelah itu saya menjelaskan bahwa ya saya makan makanan tapi dengan roti. Dan uh, waktu itu mereka sudah mengerti dan uh, sudah mulai um, kasih makanan juga, uh, lunch box, dinner box. So, uh, itu yang uh, bedanya dengan culture. Dan, uh, what I want to say about this rice is, uh, if you believe me, I've been uh, for 10 years in Indonesia, and after uh, I was back to Uzbekistan, I started to eat uh, rice here. So whatever I eat, for example, chicken or fish, I, I'm not full when I eat them uh, with my bread, but it will be very delicious with rice because for 10 years, I started to uh, be used to eat rice and it's really interesting fact in my life. Uh, jadi, uh, waktu saya ke rumah makan, Uh, saya uh, pertama hari saya uh, bilang uh, roti, yang hari kedua saya bilang roti tawar setelah saya uh, dapat roti manis di uh, kemarin. Jadi uh, next day I went there and I started to structure my sentence. So first I used the vocabulary and then I wanted to structure my sentence. Jadi Uh, saya mulai belajar gramarnya dan saya bilang uh, saya tidak mau pesan nasi di kantin itu. Tapi uh, mereka uh, wajahnya itu tidak seperti senang karena kata-kata uh, saya mungkin terlalu keras atau apa saya belum tahu waktu itu. Jadi saya bilang saya tidak mau pesan nasi which is direct Uh, translation. So I want to say that I'm not going to order um, uh, rice. Uh, then uh, saya itu membuat kata-katanya direct translation. Saya tidak mau pesan nasi. Tapi uh, wajahnya itu tidak seperti senang. 
karena uh, as we know in Indonesia, especially in Jogja, the people are so polite and you should be so polite with them. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's different uh, culture there and I really appreciate it. And next day, I wanted to be around the people and to learn how to express our ideas. So society is very important when we learn language and when we learn the culture of that country. So I, I went to the market and to the crowded places, uh, to the uh, to, to cafe, and I started to learn how they express their language. So after that, next day, I uh, made another sentence. Uh, I wanted to buy, I, I wanted to express that I'm not going to buy rice, but I said it in different way. Jadi saya bilang, gak usah pakai nasi ya, bu. Jadi itu yang uh, berbedanya. Yang pertama saya bilang saya tidak mau pesan nasi, tapi mereka tidak senang dengan kata-kata saya. Tapi next day saya bilang nggak usah pakai nasi ya bu. So after that they said oh ya yeah, baik. Jadi itu yang bedanya uh, dengan uh, tentang culture. And as you see here, just uh, yesterday, I've been in, in, in a cafe uh, in my country after my classes. And then I see there uh, interesting uh, fact about our bread, because uh, in Indonesia, you have fish and chips. And as I said that we always eat bread uh, with, uh, with our foods. So that's why in Uzbekistan, it's not called fish and chips, but we call it fish and bread cafe. You can see the picture here. So it's written fish and bread. That means uh, we are full when we eat bread with our food. And now we are going to the next discussion is about what is culture? So to make you active, can I ask again to type and to write in a chat if we have same ideas about the culture or if you have different one or unique one? Silahkan teman-teman, mahasiswa atau para dosen mungkin bisa memberikan jawabannya tentang apa itu culture. Any? All right. Oh, it's okay. Have... Culture is a heritage, society style, identity. Yeah. Yes. I really agree with your idea. Thank you for being active. Yeah. We have some more? Yeah, it's a way of life. It's an art. Culture is, oh. art. Culture is characteristic. It's a habit, also human mind and soul. Oke, okay. this is faculty of humanities, fakultas ilmu budaya ya. Jadi they must be um, very little about the, the culture. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really happy, and I was really happy while being in, in Indonesia because most of students there are really active and they are eager to learn and to know about other cultures and to have cross cultural understandings, and it makes me really happy. Oke, okay, you're still ya. Yeah. Culture is belief. Culture is a pattern or way of life that continues to develop by a group of people and is passed down to the next generation. Yeah, I think that's all. Yeah, oke, okay, thank you, Meili. And you can see here that culture is about language, uh, the technique, skills, the art, food, and drink. So it's all about uh, knowledge and stories. And we have uh, two types of uh, culture. So they are objective culture and subjective culture. So objective culture uh, is about uh, the visual issues. So about the food, dressing, and etc. So, uh, for example, as a teacher, we should uh, dress up um, in appropriate way. That is the teacher culture and it's objective uh, dressing culture. And we have subjective culture and they are not visual, but they are hidden. 
So it's about our beliefs and uh, intentions. And here you can see a statement uh, by Kramsch in 1995. He mentioned that uh, culture is re represented and interpre interpreted by language. So, and here you can see uh, that there are uh, the terms about the culture. They are interculture and multiculture. So interculture includes customs and history and multi multiculture includes identity and social class. And here I want to uh, pay your attention for this slide. So you can see uh, three kinds of scenery here. So the first uh, scene is uh, a speech or conversation, conversation between two American people. So you can read it together. Uh, we are going to New Orleans this weekend. And the next American says, what fun. I wish we were going with you. How long are you going to be there? And uh, if she wants a ride, she will ask. She, uh, the second American is waiting. And the first American says, three days. By the way, we may need a ride to the airport. Do you think we, you, can, you can take us? And the second American says, what time? And uh, the first one says, uh, 10.30 p.m. this coming Saturday. So it's a, a normal conversation. But uh, I have a friend from Vietnam, and he was talking about this kind of conversation too. Uh, Vietnamese uh, people, uh, the first, uh, the first um, speaker in the conversation, she says that we are going to New Orleans in this weekend. And uh, next says, what fun. I wish we were going with you. How long are you going to be there? And she says, three, three days. And I hope she'll offer me a ride to the airport. So she's waiting for him or for her. And next one says, she may want me to give her a ride. And then she asks, do you need a ride to the airport? I'll take you. And the first one says, are you sure it's not too much trouble to you? So they are so polite and they feel like uh, she's, uh, he's bothered and disturbed. So uh, she, she's feeling really shy about it. And next one says, it's no trouble at all. And uh, she offers a ride to the airport. And it's also normal conversation in Vietnam. And the third scenery, what happens when Vietnamese and American uh, have a conversation together? So Vietnamese says, we are going to, the, to New Orleans this uh, weekend. And then American says, what fun. I wish we were going with you. How long are you going to be there? And Vietnamese says, three days. And then I hope she'll offer me a ride to the airport. So she's just waiting. But uh, she didn't. Uh, she didn't say anything about it. She was not open. So that's why American said, "Thanks. I'll see you when I get back." Because uh, she, American thinks if she had wanted to give me a ride, she would have offered it. I would better ask somebody else. So uh, that is the cultural difference, actually. So it happens uh, among the people who have different uh, cultures and different languages. So even we know about their language, even we can communicate in that language fluently. But if we don't know about their culture, then that makes challenge when we have conversation with those people. Uh, so that's why to know about the culture is very important when we learn a foreign language. So in order to understand the culture, we have to understand the culture's language first. Uh, neither language nor culture can be understood without knowledge of both. So we need both of them. We should uh, relate each, uh, to each other and we should uh, integrate the skills when we learn foreign language. So it's very important to uh, integrate both of them in our learning process. And uh, I want to discuss about how language shapes the way we think. 
um, for example, uh, describe photos about aging. And if I ask you to, to describe these photos, then uh, you may say that um, uh, the first picture is about being, uh, ch ch being a child, and the second one is in his school years, and the third one is university years, maybe, and the last one, uh, he is very old now, so the, the last stage of our life, yes? So you can start in this way, but uh, once I ask from my uh, Arabic friend, because we know about this theory by reading a book about uh, the language and culture, but I wanted to elaborate uh, about this fact. And then I, uh, I texted to my Arabic friend uh, and I said that just describe these photos and you know what happened. She, she described it differently because she started from uh, right to left. Because usually we, uh, we describe, uh, we start writing uh, from left to right. But uh, Ara in Arabic country, in Arabic language, uh, they start from right to left. So that's why this happens when you ask them to describe the photo uh, in Indonesia, Indonesian people or Uzbek people or some other countries people, they can start it normally from left to right. But when you ask from your Arabic friend, they started uh, describing from right to left. So that's the difference uh, about how the language shapes the way we think. And languages also differ in color spectrum, the visual world. Some languages have lots of words in, uh, for color. Some have only a couple of words like light and dark. So we add just uh, the word light before the color and then we add the word dark before the color. And then we can construct our um, ideas. Here the example. So uh, you can see here um, the color and in English it's just uh, blue, yes? And they call it uh, li light blue, uh, the one which is on our left side and then uh, dark blue, uh, which is on our uh, right side. But uh, in Indonesia, as I know that uh, you add the word muda tua. Jadi kalau mau bilang tentang um, color uh, in Indonesia mere mereka uh, tambah uh, muda dan tua uh, biru muda atau um, uh, apa itu? I really forgot some words in Indonesian. It's merah muda. For... Maybe. Merah muda also. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to say it. So about the pink, pink. yes? Yeah. Yeah, merah muda, merah tua. I really wanted to ask uh, what is uh, red in Indonesian language. And it really makes me uh, embarrassed. And because uh, I've been there for 10, 10 years and I was, I'm back to Uzbekistan uh, I was back to Uzbekistan last year and it's been just one year and I started to forget it and it's not good. <laughs> so thank you very much, Meili. And uh, in Russian, uh, it's different. So uh, they say different words to uh, different colors. So they call it Galuboy. Uh, and then if it's dark blue, uh, Biru Tua, Sini. Uh, so you can see here that they are different words. So they are not just adding uh, appropriate words before the color and make it uh, make make it sense that it's a light one and it's the dark one. But uh, they uh, give so that's why uh, the vocabulary and uh, the grammar and uh, everything in about the language in Russian. Uh, language is very rich because they have different words for different colors. So they call Galuboy for um, uh, light blue and Sini for uh, 
dark blue. And uh, in Uzbek language, you can see here, uh, we call it och kök and tok kök. So that means och uh, in direct translation, uh, it means um, hungry actually and talk means uh, it means in direct tr translation full so it's uh, the, if we do direct translation for uh, light blue then we say uh, hungry blue and full blue so it's a direct translation but actually we describe the the lightness and darkness with the, these kind of words och and talk so this is a difference uh, how the language shapes uh, the way people think so and we can say that russian language and vocabulary and grammar is really rich and here another example uh, for example, uh, actually, I wanted to put here um, a picture to make you sure uh, what's happening, but I forgot it. Sorry. So uh, in English, uh, they call, uh, they, they say, I broke my leg. Or even it's accident, they say she broke the plate. So uh, that it doesn't mean that uh, we break our legs ourselves, right? So the accident happened and uh, we are not saying that uh, uh, we are not saying that this accident accident happened and uh, my my leg is broken. Yeah, sometimes we say it, but uh, mostly in general, uh, we say mm, I broke my leg. So that doesn't mean that you are breaking your leg yourself, but uh, it's the actual way uh, to express about the accident in English. Uh, so, and even, uh, she, even she didn't hit or she didn't uh, break the plate herself, but something happened, uh, accident happened here. For example, maybe she hit some, some, uh, something there, for example, let's say table and uh, next table, there was a plate on that table. And then uh, two tables hit each other, then the plate was, uh, plate fell down and it was broken. But in English, uh, we just say she broke the plate. Uh, and in Russian, it's different. So, uh, when they say she broke the plate, uh, but here, uh, the meaning is she really broke the plate herself. But uh, when, when uh, it happened by accident, then they just say, Tarelka bola slomana. Tarelka bola slomana. That means um, uh, the plate was broken, but uh, so in, in Russian language, they express this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of um, events in, in different way. So in, but in English, they just call it, she broke the plate. Even it was an accident, but even uh, it was uh, that she really break the plate herself. But in Russian, it's different. So they express their ideas also in different way. That means they have really um, rich uh, language and culture uh, in, terms, uh, in terms of uh, language and culture. Uh, and uh, you can see here that they pay attention who did it or they are more realistic. It's about uh, the people who speak in English, native speakers. So they pay attention who did it and they are more realistic. And even it's in even it's uh, by accident, but uh, anyway, they say that uh, they did it. But Russian people may be considered that it's an accident. So that's why, uh, yeah, they express this kind of events in different way with different words and with different grammar structure too. So uh, how different language uh, speakers think differently. Uh, it's about how the language shapes uh, the way people think. But it's not about how people elsewhere think, but it's 
all about how you think. It's how the language that you speak shapes the way that you think. And here, uh, another example, and it's also uh, interesting. Uh, so, uh, you know, the road, and uh, in a Russian language, uh, the translation of road is uh, daroga. And uh, in Arabic language, I think it's uh, tarik or tariko, they, they call it. And uh, you, 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 you all know that in Arabic and Russian languages, they have uh, feminine and masculine. So for every word, uh, they have it. And uh, the way they think about the object or event, uh, they have also different ideas or different opinions or different descriptions for uh, that object. Uh, for example, uh, I, I read it uh, from the theory. And just yesterday, before I presented to you uh, this topic, then I was really curious about about it. And then I have a friend from uh, Arabic country and we studied together in Indonesia and I just texted him. Uh, his name is Ahmad Fikri. And uh, I said that this is the picture of road, Ahmad. Uh, so how you describe this road? And then he texted me back that uh, the road is fast, long and clean. And then at the same time, I texted to my Russian friend and I asked he, uh, her to describe this road. And she texted me back that uh, this road is beautiful. So you see, uh, because, because the reason is uh, the road is Daroga in a Russian language and it's feminine. So that's why she's describing it, it in that way so that uh, the road is beautiful. But in Arabic country, in Arabic language, the word road is masculine. So that's why uh, my friend is not saying that the road is beautiful or something, some ad ad adjectives which relates, uh, some adjectives which relate to feminine words. So, so uh, Arabic friend texted me back that the road is fast, long, and clean. That means uh, those kind of ad adjectives uh, more close to masculine. So that's the difference, um, the, the way people think uh, and um, how shapes the language uh, when they express their ideas and express uh, their thoughts uh, when they have this kind of feminine and masculine uh, in their uh, grammar, in their uh, for their for the words for the objects, so uh, that's the difference you can see here. So um, I think. Uh, it's better to have discussion more because I have a lot to talk about the culture and language and my own experience. And that's why uh, I'm, I'm not going to make it like theoretically, uh, but practically. So that's why uh, I made here a conclusion. Language and culture uh, permits our thinking and the way of viewing the world. And your language is your identity in conclusion. But but we have uh, give a session for discussion part and we can discuss a lot if you have questions for me related to culture or uh, languages, uh, which I know maybe. So you are welcome uh, because uh, I have lots of uh, experience actually whenever I went to Indonesia and then to Thailand on conference and Singapore and Malaysia and also India. And uh, it's really interesting to talk and to discuss uh, all about the culture. So you are welcome if you have any questions. Okay. It's a very interesting uh, presentation here, Rima. And I know uh, the participants, they all want to uh, getting involved in our discussion, silahkan bagi yang ada pertanyaan bisa dituliskan di kolom chat atau mungkin bisa um, menanyakan langsung dengan cara menekan tombol um, pada di sini. 
raise hand ya, raise hand di reactions. Silakan Pak Ibu sekalian, para mahasiswa kalau ada yang ingin untuk bertanya atau ingin menyampaikan opininya. Oke, okay, ada yang uh, ini ya. Ada yang raise hand, ada dua orang yang raise hand. Kita langsung saja ya, Rima ya. Ada oh, dari hai. Vina Lalensang. Friska Pando dan Karina. Oh, ada juga yang dari Jinevi. Kita mulai mungkin dari Vina Lalensang. Oke. Okay. Ya. Dari Vina Lalensang. Silahkan Vina. Halo Vina. Om oh, enggak bisa di oh, minta tolong host untuk Uh, mengizinkan Vina Lalensang. Oke, okay, sudah bisa ya. Silahkan. Oke, okay, um, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Rima, um, thank you for your great uh, um, presentation. Uh, I would like to ask about, uh, because you have mentioned before about the society is the important when we learn language. So I want to ask, uh, do you think if we want to learn a uh, foreign language, we have to uh, come to the country that owns the language. And also, uh, since uh, you can speak in for foreign language, um, maybe you can give us uh, some advice or tips uh, to learn a foreign language when we uh, don't go to the country that have the language. Thank you, that's my question. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, okay, so the first question, thank you very much for interesting questions. Uh, so the first one was about, um, should we go uh, to that country to learn the language? Uh, but I think it's important uh, to learn the language uh, with, uh, with its society. Uh, because I, I saw the difference uh, when I talked to the students uh, of World Languages University, um, which are doing their uh, courses in Indonesian language, because um, I can tell you that we have three places uh, to teach Indonesian language, uh, actually, uh, they are World Languages University in Uzbekistan and uh, Samarkand State University, and then um, uh, Orient uh, the Oriental Studies University in Uzbekistan. So they have uh, Indonesian language to teach. They have the department, and uh, I was talking with one of the students, which is really doing well in uh, her. Um, Indonesian course, uh, but unfortunately she hasn't been to Indonesia yet. So that's why even she knows a lot about the grammar, but uh, she uh, the, the way she talks is more, more close to Russian culture because uh, her background is um, Russian ancestry. So the way she speaks is uh, really close to Russian culture speaking. So uh, that's why why um, I felt like uh, it doesn't really sound uh, like a uh, real Indonesian language. So that's why I highly recommended her too, that she's doing really great, jo good job. And uh, I recommended her just to go to Indonesia and uh, explore the culture and uh, adopt uh, how to, the way uh, to express her ideas and opinions in Indonesian language, learning by um, learning by uh, Indonesian people, because the way uh, you express, uh, the way Indonesian people express their ideas in Indonesian language is different. The way uh, the student is learning the language in her country. So they, uh, they don't really know how they express their feelings and opinions in Indonesia and they don't know about their culture. And that's why it makes them to be challenged. So that's why, as I told you that uh, learning languages through culture is really important. So we should uh, start learning uh, culture whenever we 
uh, whenever we start a for, uh, to learn foreign language. So I think, uh, in my opinion, it's better and it's the best solution when you uh, start learning foreign language. Even, even if you are not learning that language, uh, by going to that country and studying that language in that country, but it's better just explore the culture uh, for a month or for for a week in that country so in that way you can uh, be really excellent and you can be fluent in that language uh, by learning the culture and the second one was about uh, the tips for learning languages uh, so uh, I think, uh, yeah, the languages which I, uh, which I um, speak uh, are really different with each other because uh, as we know, in Russian language, they have uh, genders for every object. So like feminine and masculine, but uh, English is different and Indonesian language itself is different because uh, it's really uh, but Indonesian language is really easy to uh, structure the grammar because you don't have the tenses. And uh, it was not trouble for me or challenge to learn the, the Indonesian language. So uh, I think uh, the tips are uh, you should make a, make a friend. So make just friends uh, on social uh, network, maybe uh, with the people, uh, with the native people of that language. So in that way, it will be easy for you to acquire the language. Actually, I started my uh, learning Indonesian language at the university before I started my master degree program because I was on scholarship uh, and then uh, I, I applied it in Uzbekistan and then when I uh, started uh, to learn the Indonesian language then I thought maybe it's really difficult and maybe it will be challenging for me to acquire the language because they said that I'm going to start my classes my master degree classes with Indonesian friends in Indonesian uh, in, uh, Indonesian language environment. So that's what they asked us to be really active and to uh, learn the language first. So we had one year course of Indonesian language and we learned about um, prefixes and suffixes like uh, kata berkata uh, or uh, bicara berbicara. And uh, I was really confused uh, where to use ber and where to use um, man. So for example, uh, berbicara, uh, and then uh, you say like um, tulis, and then they said that uh, menulis. And I was confused, should we use, can we use bertulis? and they were explaining me the difference. So uh, you have so many prefixes and it made me uh, to be challenged in that way in, uh, in that, at that time. But um, uh, for a year, we uh, learned about the grammar and how to write, how to speak and how to uh, improve our uh, listening skills in Indonesian language. Uh, but to tell the truth, to tell the truth, I um, I was not that fluent uh, when I uh, start when I was doing my course uh, for Indonesian language at the university. But when I started my master degree program, I really felt uh, confident, and uh, it was really good for me. Uh, when I had my Indonesian friends because uh, we went to the cinema together and uh, we had lunch together. We had discussions on our assignments from our lecturers. So uh, that way I started to learn more and better, I think. But uh, first of all, I want to thank for my lecturers at the university that they had Indonesian course for one year for us. But to tell the truth, I learned about the grammar, but I felt that it must be challenging. But when I started to be friends with uh, Indonesian people, and when I had my Indonesian friends, then I learned better. So that's why the society is uh, important. And uh, my 
the, the first and the only, I think, uh, tip to learn language is by uh, making friends. So you just find a friend if you want to learn Uzbek language, maybe, or Russian language, just make a friend with me. So in my free times, I can text to you and we can chat and we can uh, have conversation. In that way, you learn better. Thank you very much. Okay, very nice. I hope Pina Lalesang puas dengan jawabannya, ya. Yeah? Okay. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Kita ke pertanyaan berikut tadi yang angkat, yang raise hand ada Friska. Friska, silahkan, Friska. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity that has been given to me to uh, send my question. Uh, I am not a, a teacher and not a student, but I just a guest in here. Thank you, Mimili, for inviting me to allowing me also to join the seminar. And then um, my question is, give us the way, give us the way so we will not judge people, people's culture, I mean, by their language. Uh, why uh, I ask like that? I'm sorry, I will use in bahasa. Karena kalau di Indonesia, ma'am, orang pantai, orang-orang yang tinggal di pantai itu uh, mereka berbicara agak kasar. Tetapi orang-orang yang tinggal di pegunungan, tutur kata mereka uh, lembut. Tapi juga ada case yang lain, kok orang yang tinggal di gunung juga ada yang bercerita kasar dan ada yang tinggal di pantai yang bercerita lembut. So, This question uh, timbul dalam pemikiran saya. Give us the way how um, I will not judge the people's culture by their language. I think this is my question. Memeli mungkin memang sudah mengerti apa yang maksud dari pertanyaan saya. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Prima, we get it, ya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your interesting question. I never thought about it actually, but it was really interesting to know. And uh, yeah, uh, the tip for uh, not judging the people uh, by their language is uh, to <clears throat> know more about cross-cultural understanding, I think. So that's why, in my opinion, uh, the universities uh, provide uh, that kind of festivals and events on cross-cultural understanding, international festivals. So uh, in that way, Uh, we can learn each other and we can uh, learn our culture that, oh, this culture is like, like this. That's why she acts in that way. So that's her culture. That's her identity. Actually, culture is identity. Language is identity. And um, uh, for example, that's why in Indonesia, I think uh, you don't have that much challenge about uh, judging people by their culture because uh, by their language because uh, as I know in Indonesia you have lots of events and festivals on culture and cult uh, cross-cultural understanding debates and uh, talks uh, talk shows so I, uh, I I participated a lot when I was doing my Uh, master degree and PhD program uh, for about 10 years in Indonesia. Every week I had uh, some kind of event or talk show or some kind of festival. So university invited us to present our culture just to make uh, the people to learn about their culture and language and uh, to accept it. And uh, in that way, uh, they want to break the barrier or challenge about the culture and language. So I think uh, this is the best way uh, not to judge people about their culture and language uh, to, uh, by participating in this kind of events. So that's why I highly recommend if you uh, 
if you overcome this pandemic situation and if the the uh, situation uh, will be will get better again then to participate in this kind of events you have a lot at the university so they collect and gather all foreign students at the university and they ask them to present their culture and indonesian students and people can learn other cultures and uh, start accepting and uh, adopting uh, in that culture and then uh, gain a knowledge. So that's why this is the best way, I think. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, it's a good input, ya, yeah, suggestion. Di um, tempat saya bekerja juga, biasanya ada, ya, yeah, something like cultural night, ya. Yeah. Um, where, where all the students from different culture can uh, present their cultures, jadinya saling saling apa presentasi tentang culturenya, makanannya, cara uh, pol apa politeness sistemnya di culture tersebut. Karena if not, dan kadang-kadang kita stereotyping ya. Kalau orang pantai seperti ini, kalau orang ini seperti ini, but it's not do it. Better not to judge. Thank you, Rima. Okay, we come to moving on to the next question. I'm going to um, read from the chat box, ya. Bagian ya di chat box dulu. Ini ada dari Galang Asmara Putra Jatmiko. Okay, I can language and culture be quickly spread to individuals through music? Maybe based on your experience, Rima, did you learn foreign language through music too? Is it? Uh, yes, of course. Thank you very much for the question. It's really interesting to discuss about it. Uh, uh, actually, uh, let's say young learners. Young learners uh, learn the language uh, by listening to the music and by songs. And um, uh, you know what? Why? Why it happens? Uh, I don't know in Indonesia, but in my country, we have uh, a song for baby to make uh, for babies to make them to be quiet and to sleep well. Do you have this kind of song for babies? Yes, we have it. Yes. And uh, that's why. That's why I want to say this concept because uh, why uh, we learn better by songs because actually before we learn the language by grammar and vocabulary, we acquire the language by listening to the song from our mommies to make us to be quiet and to sleep well. So uh, learning new language and getting new knowledge is also about uh, to be young learner as a young learner actually. So that's why uh, if young learners uh, start acquiring the language by songs, then why not uh, for the beginners to acquire the that language uh, by songs? And uh, I'm really, I, I really uh, agree with these statements that uh, young, uh, the learners learn better by songs. And we have different activities for songs. Uh, whenever I started to learn uh, Indonesian language, uh, we also uh, sang a lot of songs uh, during our classes. And uh, I have uh, my second year students right now, and we also have activities with the songs, like filling the gaps, uh, listening to the song, and then filling the gaps uh, in, in the blanket and uh, something like that. And in that way, they start uh, uh, they start improving their vocabulary skill and their listening skill too. Uh, so that's why I agree that people learn better by listening to the songs and uh, by singing a song. Okay, thank you, Rima, for the answer. I hope, um, siapa tadi yang betul galang ya? Galang sudah puas dengan jawabannya. I also would like to greet everyone uh, who are watching on YouTube, yeah, YouTube channel. There are 38 participants on our YouTube channel. Okay, I hope. Um, everyone enjoy this public lecture, yeah. Dan kita masuk ke pertanyaan berikutnya dari yang raise hand, ya, Karina, silakan. Karina, 
Okay. okay um, thank you for your opportunity to Mem Eli and Mem Rima. So uh, I would like to ask uh, Mem Rima. Uh, before that, uh, can you hear my voice clearly, Mem? Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. So uh, um, I should know that young generation or people know, uh, nowadays, uh, especially uh, young generation, they usually mix the languages when they talk. Uh, for example, like when we combine Indonesian language and English language, or add some English word into our daily life talk. So my question is, uh, do you think if we use the language like that, we can make our uh, mother tongue uh, language become worse? Uh, that's my question. Thank you, Mem Eli and Mem Dima. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh... Karina and uh, yes, uh, actually uh, this is my topic. I am really interested in this topic because, as you know, I uh, I'm raising my bilingual and multilingual children, and I all I always recommend them or encourage them to speak uh, only in one language. For example, not to mix uh, the the words in two or three languages, but just uh express their ideas in one language in one sentence then maybe they can move on to next sentence in another language if they don't have enough uh, knowledge about that language but uh, i think yeah that's the good point uh that um uh, it's not recommended uh, by the researchers too that uh, better not to mix the language when you learn that language. So uh, it makes people to be challenged and then uh, you will not be fluent in both languages. And uh, also maybe you can uh, start uh, forgetting uh, to master in one language. So that's why better not to mix uh, the words and uh, not to make ourselves to be challenged. Oke, okay. oke, okay, thank you. Itu, itu terkait dengan upaya pemertahanan bahasa juga ya, Karina ya. Oke, okay, thank you Karina, and thank you Rima for the answer. And uh, we move to another question from chat box ya. Yeah. Uh, this one. Apakah dengan mendalami pembelajaran sebuah bahasa akan membuat kita terikat dengan culture-nya secara otomatis ya? Yeah? Or does learning a language make us uh, apa ya, automatically bound to its culture or we need to learn the culture or it is acquired automatically I think something like that mm. uh, thank you for the question uh, yes I think <coughs> uh, when we learn the language then we start observing the people around us and we start observing the events and uh, the situation happening around us. And uh, by that way, we uh, learn better their culture and it will be easier for us to express uh, our uh, knowledge in their language, uh, approaching to their culture. So that's my opinion, uh, because um, when you approach uh, to their culture, then it will be easier to you to express your ideas and knowledge in that in that language. Otherwise, I think uh, that will be really ch challenging between uh, the native speakers of that uh, language and then foreigner. Uh, that's why it's uh, recommended in uh, applying uh, applying for the cultural knowledge teaching um, in English classrooms. So that's why uh, you are not going to learn only or to study only the grammar and vocabulary and, um, and the lexicology, linguistics uh, in English classes, but also the culture. So we should always take into consideration about the language and culture and its relationship with each other. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, and now I'd like to ask June Fiki, June Fiki Miko Arwan, who raised hand, silakan. Wait, yeah, our host, can you please unmute? Okay. 
Okay, it's already unmute. Okay, thank you very much for this occasion. Uh, this, um, yeah. It's a very mm -hmm. pleasure to be here as a participant in this public lecture. So uh, my question is, if we are visiting uh, a new country and uh, it is uh, a different one with our country and our culture, how to adapt easily? I know, I, uh, I do know that uh, we, uh, it will it will take time to uh, adopt um, with the society, but uh, maybe there's a tips. Um, for example, the tips uh, how to uh, adopt the society and the culture. Because um, I I really believe that if if we are new in this in the country, uh, we will uh, experience the the culture shock. So. Um, uh, I my question is how to adapt easily and interact with the people with the culture. Okay, thank you, Jinefiki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for the question. I was actually I was waiting this question because it's interesting and uh, you know even I put some points about the cultural shock, but uh, yeah, I thought in my presentation it was better to present about the language and culture itself and their relationship and the influence uh, to each other. But then I thought maybe there will be a question about cultural shock, and uh, it's really interesting interesting topic for me to discuss with people around me uh, and uh, I always if if I have some time for example while my teaching then I ask my students too if it's interesting for them uh, to know about the cultural shock and especially what happened uh, in the country where I have been so and how I overcome uh, those challenges and those uh, cultural shocks. And uh, this is interesting for my students too. And whenever we have time, then we discuss about this kind of topic. Thank you very much for the question. And now I want to answer for your question. Uh, yeah, the cultural shock happened with me too. And uh, I, I haven't thought that I, I will have this kind of uh, cultural shock and challenge. And even I informed to my university that I was going back to my country because of that cultural shock. But then uh, they started to uh, make me that it's a cultural shock and it's normal <coughs> because, uh, you know, uh, I think you are, uh, uh, anda uh, mahasiswa S1 atau S2? Can I know about it? Uh, um, I think mostly S1, yeah. Mostly. Yes, uh, I'm a second, second year. Second year of student. Okay, thank you very much. So what I want to say is, uh, before I went to Indonesia for my master's degree, uh, actually uh, we had uh, it, we had English classes at the university when I was doing my bachelor degree in my country. And of course we had a subject about the culture, but I, I couldn't remember if we discussed about the cultural shock topic. So that's why it was something, uh, something, um, something not familiar for me when I went to Indonesia. And then when I informed about my challenges uh, to the university, to the international office, they said that it's called cultural shock. And I'm really happy that you are a bachelor degree student and you already know about the, this term about cultural shock. It's good. And uh, I want to say that the first cultural shock for me was about Chichak. The lizard, yes. So uh, on my first day in Indonesia, I uh, was in uh, in a house which we rented only one room, and it's called Kos, yes, Kos Kosan. And there I uh, had my chocolate and then some biscuit, and then I forgot it to um, bring to the uh, fridge, and then I just put it, put them on my table, and I slept. And uh, in the middle of the night, then I noticed uh, something happening with my chocolate and biscuit. And I see uh, there was lizard, chichak. 
and it was quite big. And I had never seen this kind of lizard in my country, and it's not normal in my country. Uh, we we you don't uh, see chichaks uh, uh, li lizards on the walls actually in my country. Uh, so it was really uh, it was really not familiar uh, situation for me at that time, and I shouted. And all girls uh, came to me and they said that what happened in the middle of the night? And I said, there is a big lizard. And they said, oh, it's normal. And you will be adopted for this uh, situation because you can see lizards everywhere. And I said that, yes, in my country, we have lizards, just the small ones, but you can see that outside, but not inside your house. And then I said, oh, how can I deal with this problem? I am really afraid and scared. And they said, uh, no, uh, they are our friends. You know, uh, babies love uh, lizards. They play with them. And that's why it's, it's okay. Just uh, take it easy, something like that. But I see there were a lot of lizards and I really cried in international school that I really want to go back to my country. But uh, they explained me in very nice way that they said, uh, no, uh, lizards uh, don't harm people. So take it easy. And it's, uh, as, as you know, it's a tropical country. In tropical country, it's normal and you should be adopted. Yeah, just you think about your master degree program. After you overcome this problem and this challenge, then you will get your master degree certificate. And it made me to be motivated for the, for the uh, education again and motivated to stay in Indonesia, actually. So I started, uh, I also started to be friends with lizards and then I started uh, to be adopted for the lizards and I accepted them uh, like, uh, yeah, some of my Indonesian friends said that uh, the lizards, uh, uh, the lizards, in fact, they help us to uh, eat the mosquitoes. So in that way, uh, I was really motivated and then I accepted them as my friends. So as you said that how to overcome those challenges, just look at them positively. If it's really new for you, then it's better to look uh, those kind of event, uh, those kind of situations positively. So that's the solution. And you know, the second uh, cultural shock for me was about bath bathtub. So in my country, we, ha we have bathtubs and we take shower inside that bathtub. But when I went uh, with my tutor to the course, then I see there, uh, what do you call it? Buck or is it? Buck, yeah, buck. buck and yeah. gayung. Yeah. Yes, and it was a bit uh, small. And then I thought that it's a bath bathtub. And I asked them, oh, how can I manage to go inside to this bug? Because I thought it's a bathtub. And they explained me, oh, it's good that you asked. Uh, it's not bathtub, but it's called bug. So you will take water from it and then you take shower with that water. And I, I asked them, where is the shower? I want to take shower. So that was really challenging for me and really interesting fact. But then I used to adopt it because um, yeah, it's a tropical country and it's better to take shower uh, very often and it's very comfortable. Then I felt that it's very comfortable, you see? Because I started to overcome those kind of challenges and cultural shocks. I really want to talk more about the cultural shock because it was really interesting for me. You know, the third one was sitting on the floor. So it's not normal in my country and in Indonesia, uh, I see everywhere uh, you just uh, feel confident uh, sitting on the floor. And then I also used to it because uh, it was good to have group conversations with my master degree program and PhD degree programs, uh, friends. So sitting on the floor then became, uh, it was new for me, uh, but then it became very comfortable for me. So it's better to discuss topics uh, by sitting on the floor. And even uh, I don't care about it in my country now. And I just uh, sit on the floor or uh, on the 
yeah on the steps uh, if there, there there is any then uh, everybody look at me differently and they surprised about my um situation and action and they say uh, oh why you are sitting here maybe you need a chair can I bring a chair? Then I say, no, I can bring it myself, but I'm all, all, already used to sit on the floor. So that's okay, that's fine. Don't worry, something like that. So I'm used to it. And smiling. Smiling was uh, not cultural shock, but something different for me uh, because every time uh, when we meet, even they are, uh, even we don't know about that people, but we should not, our head and then not our head and then just give a smile the, the first time when i saw that uh, that action then i went directly to that person and i asked if she knows about me and if i forgot about her and she said no uh, you are stranger you uh, and i don't know about you but i'm just nodding my hand head and i'm giving a smile and then i thought oh it's a culture so it's really good and i i felt so happy uh, to know about this culture but first uh, it shocked me and then uh the next was going to alpha marat or indomarat even it's very close to your house going there by motorcycle because in my country usually we walk and we go there on our food because uh, it's uh, it it seems us uh, really close, and you don't need to be bothered to drive your car or uh, to ride your uh, ride your bicycle because we don't have uh, motorbikes in my country, so we use uh, cars and bicycles if it's close. So. Uh, it was really strange for me in Indonesia. It shocked me actually because uh, everybody using their motorbikes to go to Alpha Mart and Indomart, even they are so close to their house. And uh, oh, next one! It was really interesting for me uh, on weddings. Uh, usually, you put the you put money inside envelope and you write your name on envelope and you put it inside the box. And it was really new for me and interesting and I shocked uh, because in my country on wedding uh, guests come uh, with the present or with money and they just uh, put it in your pocket or yeah, give it to someone uh, which is really close to you. But uh, in Indonesia, you write your name on envelope and then you put money inside the envelope and you put inside the box. But it's really good. And you know what? Because uh, me and my husband were very busy person, very busy people, and we were studying at that time, and we didn't have time to come back to Uzbekistan and organize our wedding. So that's why we decided to have our wedding in Indonesia. Actually, my wedding was in Indonesia. And, uh, you know, uh, at that time, uh, when everybody went back home after our wedding, we see there is a box and there are a lot of envelopes and names on the envelopes. And then it made us really surprised because we already know who gave us how much money. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the interesting fact. And then uh, traffic jam in Jakarta, it shocked me. It was really cultural shock for me because uh, for the first time in Jakarta, when I was when I went there for traveling, then I stayed for three hours, not moving uh, in a car because it was really traffic jam. And we never, we have never had this condition in my country. And then uh, spicy foods, it's really spicy. Jadi, kalau di Indonesia, uh, uh, kami kalau bilang uh, mau yang uh, spicy, uh, mereka itu bikinnya uh, terlalu spicy. Uh, so first time, uh, I like spicy foods, but I think in, in my country, when you say spicy, then you will not be satisfied with that chili pepper. Because when I said uh, in Indonesia that I want spicy noodles, then they said, uh, which level? And I said, oh, I love spicy food. Then I just gave them my opinion that you can make it level five 
and then in one uh, in one portion of my noodles, I got there five peppers, five chili peppers, and it was really spicy, and I couldn't eat it at all. And I said, "Oh, spicy means uh, five means you will put five peppers in that inside the noodles." And they said, "Yes, that's the level." So you should say, "Well, level one, that will be okay for you." So that was also a cultural shock for me. And then, um, oh, next culture shock, the last culture shock, it was about when I was a guest uh, for my friend's house, then uh, after a few minutes, they came to, uh, to me uh, with a towel and they said, uh, yeah, there is a towel. If you want to take a shower, uh, you are welcome to the uh, shower room. And you, uh, uh, in that way, you feel better after that. And it was really interesting. And it was really new for me because in my country, we never offer guests to take shower in our house. But it's normal in, in, in Indonesia. And it's actually culture. And they are really friendly people. That's why I love Indonesia. And I love Indonesian people. <laughs> okay, it's very interesting. If I can add, maybe you remember about the cultural shock you faced when you were at class, how to react to a, to a lecture. Pak Bambang, you, do you remember? Yeah, jadi uh, no, Rima no, asked me. Can you remind uh, me? Can, yeah, can, can we just uh, complain or argue? Yeah, or maybe we have a different opinion with the lecture. Apakah mm -hmm. kita bisa langsung argue with the lecturer or not? And then I said mm -hmm. that in Indonesia, um, we wait until the lecturer um, give us the opportunity to ask question. Can you maybe share about it, Rima? But I forgot about it. Can you please? Oh, yeah. Me? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like in Indonesia, um, when we are attending a lecture like this, or maybe in classroom, yeah, and then you have to ask question related to the material, the given material, we cannot mm -hmm. langsung, excuse me, sir, we cannot do like that. Yeah, we, we so have I, I did it with Papa <laughs> Baba, I did it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Culture, yeah, cultural show. Because yeah. I know that in your country and also in international, it's okay if we, if we want to say our opinion, yeah, Jadi while um, the lecturer are still giving the material. You can just say, uh, "Excuse me, sir, I need to say something." Yeah, something like that. But yeah. I think Indonesia is a little bit different. I think it's yeah, the very uh, it's a good um, cultural difference that we need to learn. To. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Meili. You reminded me, and you know, yeah. I remember another fact about it. And thank you very much for reminding me. Yes, uh, it was really good that I learned a lot from my Indonesian friends how to act in a class. Yes, so because we should follow to the culture of that country, and it's good. And uh, you know what happened? Uh, I I just remember about it. Uh, there was a lecturer, and then uh, we were sitting together. I think with you, and then next to me there was uh, Faisal uh, and Faisal is also our friend and he is uh, also from Indonesia and he just he has just done his uh, PhD degree program uh, in foreign country too and uh, we were sitting together with Faisal and uh, Meili in our class and um, a lecturer uh, gave a discussion topic and he said uh, do you have any idea about this and then Faisal uh, uh, knows about that um, about that fact uh, about that concept and then he said that uh, yes it's about like this like that he was whispering and I said oh Vaisal you have an answer you can just just raise your hand and say it and he said no just wait a little bit and I was surprised why and he said that uh, by culture uh, it's not good if we just raise our hand and say oh uh, the answer is like this it means that I know more for, uh, I know more than you uh, towards uh, the lecturer so it's better to wait a bit and then if the lecturer asks again maybe after that I will tell and I, I was really shocked about it and I said oh uh, so educated you know uh, so respect for the lecturer and it's good and I, I said Faisal when you are going to say your answer and he said just wait 
And then I was really in a hurry. And I said, Faisal, just uh, let me answer. And using, using your answer, can I? And he said, yeah, it's OK. And I just raised my hand. I said, yeah, I know the answer. And then I answered for the question. And it was really mm, su surprising and interesting for me. And right now, if I remember about this condition, then I feel shy, too, because I don't know why I was so in a hurry. And just yesterday, I told about it to my students, for example, while I am explaining, then uh, it's okay, as Meili said, that uh, just raise your hand and then ask the question or discuss or argue. And then uh, they were doing something like that. And then I remember the condition uh, in Indonesia. And I said, you know what happens in Indonesia, but I'm really glad that they're active and that's our culture and normal, but it's different with Indonesia. And I explained them and I they, they said that, oh, Indonesian people are so good, educated, polite, and uh, very friendly, something like that. And I'm really happy to hear this kind of positive uh, opinions uh, towards Indonesian people from my students. Okay, thank you so much. Getting more interesting, yeah? We still have two questions here, yeah? I think I can sum up. The first one is about the accent, yeah? A question from Veronia Rindengan. Um, she asked, is it necessary to consider the accents when learning a language? And the second one, can we learn two foreign languages at the same time effectively? Yeah, it's the two last questions, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much for the questions. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, accent is important when you want to be fluent in that language. Uh, but uh, in, uh, in every country, country, they have their own accent and it's really difficult to overcome uh, the accent uh, they are using when they learn foreign languages because it really affects uh, to, the, uh, to the speech uh, <laughs> they have in that language. So uh, to overcome this kind of uh, uh, challenges, then it's better, as I told previously, it's better to communicate with native speakers or to be in that country. Uh, otherwise, uh, the accent will definitely um, affect to, the, to your speech. And uh, next question was about, uh, can we learn uh, two languages in, at the same time? Uh, I think it will be easier uh, to acquire the language in early ages. So uh, as my uh, children, they are still uh, two years old and one is five years old and they are already bilingual because uh, in everyday life, we are using uh, two languages and they are bi bilingual. And my son is multilingual, I think, because he had a little bit knowledge about Indonesian language and English language. Why? Because uh, uh, the, brain, the brain is flexible to acquire the language language. So uh, if young learner, then uh, they can um, they can learn two languages at the same time. Uh, but then uh, when you get older, when you are uh, adults, then I think uh, that will be a bit challenging to acquire two languages uh, at the same time because you have already lots of knowledge and vocabulary in your language, in your native language. So that's why uh, it will be a bit challenging uh, to adopt and to learn two languages at the same time. But uh, if you feel confident, then you can do that. But uh, actually, uh, learning and acquiring the one language and then uh, to be a bit fluent in that language, and then you start learning next language in your uh, adulthood or in your uh, teenager uh, period, then that would, that would be better. But uh, if you have children, then better to use uh, different languages because the brain is still flexible and a lot of researchers done lots of research uh, about it and they really support and encourage uh, to uh, teach the young learners, uh, especially children, uh, different languages because they, their brain is really flexible. And uh, I can say that about um, uh, my uh, 
uh, I have uh, another speech about uh, language and culture. Uh, in, in it happened in Malaysia in 2017, I think there was a <clears throat> uh, there was a big event, and I participated there uh, as a presenter of uh, about languages and uh, about language and uh, culture, and uh, it is uh, actually it was actually about uh, Indonesian uh, language and culture uh, because I had my presentations in Indonesia, but then I uh, adopt, uh, I, I combine it uh, with the Malaysian language because uh, as we know, Indonesian and Malaysian language are in, in Malay language family. So uh, maybe if you have time, you can, uh, you can watch uh, that video uh, from YouTube. I have my channel. Uh, you are welcome to watch it. And even you can uh, subscribe because I don't have many subs subscribers, sub subscribers. And it's like a promotion, yes? Promoting my channel. Oh, not really. But just... Uh, uh, recommending you to watch if you have time uh, to know uh, about the culture and language, what I have presented there, because we don't have time here uh, now to watch it together. So you're welcome to watch it in your free times. I have already sent it to you in chat for everybody and you can, you are welcome to watch it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, um, masih ada pertanyaan ya di sini Rima. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, um, oke, okay. ada satu pertanyaan, tapi sebelumnya saya mau ingatkan buat teman-teman, Bapak Ibu sekalian, silahkan mengisi link absensi ya, yang sudah dibagikan di kolom chat, agar supaya um, bisa dikirimkan sertifikat dari kegiatan ini. Oke, okay? nah uh, pertanyaan berikutnya, I want to ask, dari Nathaniel, Nathaniel Alfer ya, good day miss, I want to ask question, how to make people proud of their identity and heritage when it comes to mastering their national or local language. Because in this global world, English is such a hegemonic language in many aspects. So many people also losing their fluency in their local or national language because usage of the English language massively. How to make that people to, to feel proud to certain language so they can feel that language is also part to their identity. Mm -hmm. Is, yeah, uh, thank you very much yeah. for the question. Uh, this question is also important. And if you remember, Meili, when I when we were doing our master degree program, we had this kind of discussion with Prof. Sugirin, and Prof. Sugirin really explained us uh, very good facts about it. Yes, uh, we should proud our with our uh, language because language is our identity, and uh, identity is our nationality. So. Uh, we should be proud with our uh, language, culture, uh, because uh, in that way you, we can show uh, people our identity. So uh, how we can uh, make us to be proud of our own languages? Um, I think uh, it's better to, uh, to, for example, in, the, in, in terms of teaching, yes, because I'm a teacher and uh, to make my students to be proud of our language and culture, uh, I, I sometimes invite my students to the museum, for example, and learn a lot about our history, about our rich, rich history and rich language and culture. In that way, we can encourage them and their thoughts to be proud of our culture and language and to save our language. Because uh, if our language, if, if someone's language die, that means uh, there is no nationality, there is no society. So that's why to, uh, to keep our society and to keep our identity, we should be proud of our language. And uh, the tip is to visit to the museum and learn our culture and our history and language. So in that way, we can be proud and we can save our identity and we can uh, save our languages. Thank you very much for the question. Okay, thank you so much. 
I, I hope Nathaniel is satisfied with the with the answer. And the committee says that we still have time. Maybe I want to ask from the lecturers here, ada dosen-dosen, mungkin uh, ada tanggapan atau pertanyaan atau um, sharing ideas about language and culture, silahkan, atau mungkin dari dekan. Wow. Oke, okay, I think everyone is uh, sudah apa ya, sudah mengerti dan sudah um, ya ya, tidak ada tanggapan lagi tentang ini. Oh. Yeah, thank you very much. Ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah. oke, okay. the last question is about accent ya tadi um, related hmm. to the previous A question I think Rima already discussed about it yeah mm -hmm. um, if you want to uh, replay this uh, public lecture you can uh, click the link yeah on YouTube yeah can you can the committee may share the link of the YouTube channel so you can rewatch replay yeah anytime you want okay Uh, once again, jangan lupa untuk mengisi absensi dan mungkin sudah tidak ada pertanyaan ya. No more question. Okay, well, I think um, that's all for our public lecture today. Thank you so much, Rima, Rima Jones of Likova PhD for sharing us your insights about how do language and culture influence each other. Yeah, or maybe do you want to say uh, your closing statement or anything you yes. want? Yeah, please. Of course, because, uh, you know, I really miss uh, to communicate with Indonesian friends. So this is a good opportunity for me uh, to talk a lot. I uh, thank you for inviting me for presenting this topic because it's uh, actually it's my topic. I'm really into, interested in culture and language and uh, also teaching methods. So um, it was really good opportunity for me to present about the culture and language and I'm really Really happy that everybody here um, uh, participated actively in discussion and uh, when we have formative assessments yes exploring ideas asking questions they were really uh, active and they explored their ideas and I really appreciate it I really appreciate all of you and your participation and also uh, my friends uh, Miss Meili and Mr. Alan they invited me to this uh, conference and also for Mr. Ferry the dean of the faculty thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, to present my topic in this seminar Seminar. And uh, I also want to inform you that uh, I will be always here waiting all of you. If you have planned to visit to Uzbekistan, just contact with me and I, I will be here uh, to guide you or to travel with you because we have also lots of historical cities and, uh, um, and uh, sightseeing. So you will be really enjoy, you will really enjoy Uzbekistan mm. if you visit to our country. And the uh, tourism is also here and uh, Uh, the roads already open, so uh, we are going to overcome the pandemic situation and uh, yeah, still dealing with it, but uh, we always welcome uh, the tourists. So that's why. Uh, and I also want to mention that I really uh, enjoyed my uh, staying and studying in Indonesia, especially with my uh, good Indonesian friends. They are always helpful and friendly and also my lecturers and also Uh, we call it Bapa Ibu, yes. So I have lots of mothers and fathers in Indonesia, and we are we still keep in touch, get in touch with them, and it really makes me uh, confident and uh, really, um, really. Uh, <clears throat> 
uh, I really respect them in that way because they are always worried about me. They ask about me and they care about it. Caring is sharing. And yeah, we always care, share and love each other with Indonesian people. And my respect to you. Thank you very much for today. Uh, see you again. I'm always here to be uh, your guest lecturer or uh, to share with you my knowledge and to learn from you. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you so much, Lima. And we hope one day also you will visit Indonesia, especially Manado, especially Universitas Samratulangi. Yeah. So maybe you can I mean. share us directly. And you know, there are so many uh, good impressions and uh, reaction in chat box. Yeah, everyone is really, um, they were very impressed of your teaching today. You may read it in your chat box. And uh, also from me, yeah, I would like to thank um, Fakultas Ilmu Budaya Unstrad, the committees, the, the deans, the administrators for um, having us in this public lecture. Semoga um, public lecture ini menjadi sebuah sarana untuk kita tetap belajar, especially to learn more language as well as the culture. So um, thank you so much for your participation and uh, untuk kesempatan ini saya berikan kembali kepada Panitia. Oke, okay. terima kasih. Uh, untuk Rima ya, uh, sangat antusias saya lihat mahasiswa ya. All the students were very enthusiastic ya yeah, about uh, your presentation. Uh, Uh, dan sesudah ini uh, uh, kita akan tiba pada acara penutupan ya uh, yang akan menyampaikan uh, uh, ucapan itu adalah uh, sekretaris panitia uh, Ner Donaldo Tulung dipersilakan Ner Donal. Baik, ya, baik. Terima kasih. Shalom, salam sejahtera bagi kita sekalian. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are at the end of this public lecture. On behalf of the committee, I would like first thanks to the Almighty God because of his help and love so we can be here together following this public lecture entitled How Do Language and Culture Influence Each Other from the beginning until the end. I would like to thanks to the Dean of Faculty of Humanities, Samratulangi University, Dr. Andes Ferry Raymond Mawi Kere, and whom MA for allowing and giving us opportunity to be the committee of this public lecture. And especially to our distinguished guests and the speaker of this public lecture, Mrs. Rima John Sotli Kofa, PhD, from the National University of Uzbekistan. Thank you very much for delivering and conveying the good lecture to all of us here. We are very happy to have you here sharing your knowledge. This lecture is very useful and benefit for all of us here, the lecturers and the students. And from this lecture, we have a lot of uh, knowledge. Yeah, we can widen our insight regarding to the language and culture, especially the influence of both in our daily life. So what we get here, we can implement in our activity in teaching and learning process. Yeah. And to all of the participants in this public lecture, I would like to express thanks to all of you for joining this public lecture from the beginning until the end. And thank you as well to all of the committee for the good cooperation in this public uh, lecture, especially the head of this public lecture, 
Mr. Roger Kemua, who are very active in this uh, public lectures since the beginning of the pre preparation until the end. So this public lecture can running well. Finally, I would like to thanks to all of you, yeah, the participants for joining this uh, public lecture. So I do hope we will meet again in the coming public lecture. Thank you very much. See you again and goodbye. Okay, thank you, yeah, Rima. Back to the... Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Ara Alan. Thank you. <laughs> He's mailing. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rima. Thank you, okay. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. You.